Okay, so if you clicked on this video, you're probably trying to take good Instagram pictures. You're probably trying to make your feed look very aesthetically pleasing, trying to get some bangers, but you don't have anybody to shoot your pictures for. So, you came to the right place. I got you covered. My name is Aryan. Welcome to the video. Let's get started. So today I'm going to be showing you how to take high quality pictures that you could be posting on your Instagram, you could be posting wherever you want, just by yourself. You don't need to rely on your brother, your sister, your friends, your family. It's all going to be you today. And now by the end of this video, you should be able to take your own Instagram bangers and post them on your feed, get lots of likes, get lots of followers. And if you do that, drop this video a big thumbs up. Now, we're gonna go through a checklist of what you need. Very simple, three things. You need a camera. You can use your smartphone, but if you have a camera lying around, I definitely recommend using that because it's gonna make the process a whole lot easier. Number two, you need a tripod. You need something that's gonna hold the camera up at certain angles that you wanna be able to take the pictures with. I don't recommend putting it on top of a stable surface because you can't really manipulate that surface around. You can't tilt the camera up and down, left, right, that sort of stuff. So definitely get a tripod. You don't need an expensive one. A cheap one will do just fine. Just make sure if you're outside, it'll hold the weight of your camera because the last thing you want is you don't want your camera falling over when you're posing for pictures. Number three, this is optional, but most of you guys have a phone anyways so if your camera can connect to your smartphone via wi-fi or bluetooth it's going to also make the job a whole lot easier you're going to see why later on in this video as i walk through the step-by-step -step process of how to get these pictures now the first thing and the most important thing is that you need to scout the locations that you want to be taking your pictures in you want a location that's very aesthetically pleasing but you want it also that you can have multiple different shots and multiple different angles and locations within that one central location. You know what I'm saying? So for example, I'm in a university campus. We got this like beautiful, like rustic looking building behind me. We got a lot of greenery so I can have two major scenes where I can take pictures. I can have it with this scene and I can have like a green fall type of autumn setting as well. Now for the settings on the camera, this might be one of the most important steps as well. First thing is you want to be shooting in a raw profile. That means that your pictures are going to have a lot more information that you can edit with later down the line. You're going to see why that's important once we get to the editing step of this video. You also want to be using a continuous interval timer. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically when you press the shutter button, the camera is going to take pictures on a timer automatically. So I'm standing over there, I'm gonna be pressing the button, it's gonna be taking those pictures automatically while I change poses. That means that you don't have to be walking back to the camera, pressing the shutter button, going back and posing, walking back, pressing the shutter button. You get the gist of it, it makes your life a whole lot easier. The next thing you wanna have dialed in on your camera is the focus. If you have a newer camera, a lot of them have face detect or eye detect autofocus. So that'll make your life a lot easier because the camera is doing the focusing for you. You do not want to be manual focusing because you don't know how far you're going to be standing away, especially if you're taking them by yourself. You don't really have that luxury. So autofocus is definitely the way to go. And the last thing is just setting the exposure and the look of the picture just how you want it to. The better you set this in the camera, the easier it is it's going to be to edit after the fact. So now we're in the planning phase. The better you plan, the better your photo is going to look. So what I recommend is going on Pinterest and searching up men's photo shoot or men's photo shoot outdoors or something along those lines where you can get some inspiration and you can get some ideas of how you want your pictures to look. That's what I did for this. So I kind of know the poses and the scenes and the type of shots that I want to be getting. Hopefully by the time I finish this video, there's still enough light that I could be taking those pictures the way I want them to. All right, now with that being said, it's finally time to set the camera up, set a location up and start taking the pictures. So for the first kind of picture or pictures that I want to take, I want to take them along this staircase. I think it looks really cool. I think it looks really rustic and modern at the same time. I think it's going to be a really cool vibe. So let's get the camera set up and let's get into it. All right, vlog camera are in here. So I got the camera set up over here and I'm gonna be standing over here to take these Instagram pictures. I'm gonna be setting it on a telephoto lens so I really get that blurred background effect, which I really, really like. <laughs> it 
it's getting kind of dark, but I'm gonna still try to get a couple more shots. I wasn't planning for it to get this dark so soon, but daylight savings hour kicked in yesterday, so it's not going the way I wanted it to. Okay, so since there's no light left, I kind of set it up to face the sunset to kind of get this dark night type shot. So hopefully that looks good, we'll try it out. A little change of plan, but sometimes you just gotta deal with these in the, in the situation. Even with those pretty shit conditions, I still managed to get a couple good shots. And the best thing about this is that since I'm shooting in a raw file format, I can really edit these pictures nice to look great later on. So I'm gonna go home for today because the lighting is not the best anymore. And I'll show you that by yourself, with just a camera, a tripod, and some good editing, you can make some really good looking pictures all by yourself. So let's go back home and let's get to editing. All right, so now it's currently the next day and I got all the pictures loaded up in my computer. So we're gonna be going through them, sorting them out, editing them, and then eventually getting them ready to post to Instagram. So let's just jump right into the computer and let's get that done. So I loaded all the pictures up into Adobe Lightroom. Now you can use whatever editing app you like. For me, I prefer Lightroom because it gives me a good level of control and I have some presets and I can use it pretty well. But any app will work. If you're on the phone, you can use an app like Visco, uh, Lightroom for the phone. You can even use the inbuilt photo editing app. As long as you know what you're doing, you should be able to get some pretty good edits. Now, one of the reasons I like using Lightroom is because you can see out of all the pictures that I have here, there's like a way that I organize them. So if you go into them, a picture like this, it's pretty useless. So I wouldn't rank that anything. I use the number ranking system. So for me, there's like, there's five stars. I use three stars for a picture that I might edit, four stars for a picture that I will edit. And then once they're done, the finished one, the exports, I rank that as five stars. We can go through them right now. Like this picture is nothing. I'm not going to rank it. I'm probably not going to rank this one either. This one I might edit, so let's hit that three stars. Probably not going to edit this one. I'm going to try to see this one three, another three. And we'll just keep doing that until all of them are done. So for example, this picture, I'm going to rank four because I definitely plan on editing this one. Now in a process like this, it helps to have taken a lot of pictures because that gives you a lot of options to work from because every picture is not gonna turn out well. For example, all of these pictures are out of focus. Now, if I had just left it, called it a day and just taken these pictures, I wouldn't have anything to work with. So taking more pictures, a lot of pictures is gonna definitely increase the chances of you having a banger. Okay, now that I've gone through and ranked all the images, I'm gonna go directly into four stars and I'm gonna start editing the pictures that I have four star ranking for them because those are the ones I know that I'm gonna edit. From there, I can copy a few of the edits and then paste them onto the three star images, see what those look like, and then maybe those will be edited as well. But right now, let's start with the four star images. We're going to filter this by four stars and get right to editing. So as you can see with all these pictures, they're all pretty dark. So that's because when I was taking these pictures, it was like sunset, these daylight saving nonsense times. So we're gonna definitely brighten them up. We're gonna increase the exposure a little bit. That'll bring out some of the details. Can increase the highlights. Increase the shadows just a little bit. And already in like three seconds, look at the difference this is making. I wanna create a little bit more of a moody look because this is like, at night, kind of like sunset, so I'm gonna drop the blacks a little bit. Now, the good thing about Lightroom is that you have some presets, so you can play around 
with the different presets. For this video, I'm not gonna be using those because this is gonna be a very universal video. So if you're not editing on Lightroom, you don't have to rely on these presets. But in any other circumstance, I would usually use a preset and that would be my starting point and then edit the picture from there. Now the thing that you really have to watch out for and pay attention is that you're not over editing because over editing pictures, like for example, let's say like I start cranking these settings, like it just looks bad, it looks tacky. You wanna have a picture that starts off pretty raw and then you wanna edit it to a point where it's like neutral or it just has a little bit of a stylistic look so it's not looking like overdone and very kind of like, it kind of gives you like a immature or like like almost like a kid is editing it. You don't want that look at all. So subtlety, subtlety, subtlety. So I'm gonna quickly get these edits done and then I'll show you the final product. All right guys, so after some editing, these are the pictures that I came up with. I got three pictures in total, which is pretty good for about 30 minutes of self timer shooting. So that just goes to show you without anybody there with your own camera, your own tripod, and not even the best lighting conditions to be fully honest, you can create some really, really good Instagram pictures or professional level looking pictures that you can use wherever you want. So these are the three that I came up with. I'm gonna play them on the screen here. As you can see, I kind of went for a little bit more of a moody or dark or colder theme to them. And I think they came out pretty good, especially for the fact that I had no help on them. Now, I'm not saying that this is always a solution and you should definitely ask your friends or your family or somebody to help you take pictures. But in a pinch, this is definitely the way to go. So that's gonna do it for me in this video. Thank you for watching. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. If you liked what you saw, or you found it helpful, consider subscribing and dropping this video a big thumbs up. My name is Aryan and I'll see you guys in the next video.